Good morning. Today is Tuesday, June 23rd. It must have been amazing to watch Jesus teach, never in a classroom, but on the streets, beside the sea, on the sea, sometimes in a boat and sometimes not, on mountains, in the wilderness. Jesus poured out the very wisdom of God for all people. He would engage in conversation with nearly everyone, certainly with everyone. The outcasts, like the woman at the well, or the blind man at Jericho, the leaders of the community, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, or the leaders of the nation, Pilate, Caiaphas. He spoke to fishermen and tax collectors. He spoke to men and women, a radical move for that day, and he spoke to crowds as they came to him on the mount, beside the sea, or outside the cities in, a, in desolate places. They all wanted to have conversations with him because they could sense that this was no ordinary man. He claimed to be one with the Father, which was indeed a claim that he himself was God. He claimed that he was here before Abraham, a claim that people questioned but they couldn't refute because of his wisdom. On every front, he said things that made people both marvel and stand puzzled. There were those also that were plotting against him. They were wanting to catch him in some inconsistency, so they presented hypothetical problems to him. Each time, he handled both the questions and the questioners with insight that affirmed the deity that he was claiming. Within chapters of Matthew 22 and 23, Jesus encounters very different teaching moments in which he is able to give the right words to very different audiences. In one of the conversations in the, with the, Fer with the uh, Sadducees, they presented Jesus with a situation that indeed would never happen. They wanted to see how he would answer. It had to do with seven brothers, each marrying the same woman after the next older brother died. They asked, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? Now, keep in mind, these Sadducees did not believe in any resurrection whatsoever. They were merely trying to present Jesus with a situation for which he couldn't give a good answer. But he did give a good answer. It wasn't what they expected. But he addressed both the situation and the reason why they were asking such a question to begin with. Jesus said to them, You are mistaken, not understanding the scriptures nor the power of God. Jesus addressed the question. But the heart of the answer came with the reality that they were not understanding because they did not understand what scripture was truly teaching, nor did they understand that God has a power that goes way beyond their ability to reason. In the very next chapter in Matthew 23, Jesus is in conversation with the Pharisees, another sect of the Jews, but this time Jesus was not gentle with his reply. He called them out for their hypocrisy. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, he said seven times. He condemned them for their misrepresentation of God and of God's plan. He was not gentle. He was abrupt. He was stinging with his words. And everybody learned from what he taught. I think the thing that he said to the Sadducees and consequently meaning for all of us, including the Pharisees, has real application for our world today. In so many ways, the division and the hate and the ignorance of people comes back to the fact that too many do not understand the scripture, nor do they understand the power of God. If those two concepts were foremost in our minds, we would not be so divided. We would not be seeing such hate we would not be watching people so intent on not listening to each other. Those two ideas, the authority of Scripture and the presence of the power of God, transform us as individuals. 
as families, as cultures within our country, even if the transforming comes to the whole of the nation, if in fact we would acknowledge those two major principles, the authority of Scripture and the power of God. The way forward to real justice is to understand the justice of God. The way forward to real peace is to understand the peace of God. The way forward to real change is to understand the transforming power of God in our lives as instructed in Scripture. It was appropriate for Jesus to give the answer that he did to those questioning him. And it is appropriate, that same answer is appropriate for us to give as people are questioning us today. We want to be able to give the answer that points back to the authority of Scripture and the power of God. For us, for all people, to understand what the Scripture really says and to understand what the power of God means in our lives. Understand these things, Christian. Understand these two major principles that Jesus would give. And then let us go forward and be the answer to the questions that the world is asking today. We stand on the authority of Scripture. We are empowered by the power of God. Let this be a good day.